Hi, uh, last week uh, we came across one kid, a uh, two year old boy and he is absolutely healthy, uneventful past. Uh, around 12 o'clock in the afternoon he was playing with uh, his grandmother's medications somehow and he took three tablets. Those tablets were of Dapson and grandmother was on some treatment for her skin conditions and uh, three tablet of 100 milligram each, so around 300 milligram. Uh, of that tablet he took. Parents initially thought it won't cause any problems, child had a food, he slept and evening around 6, 6.30 or so, parents noticed bluish discoloration of her lips and tongue and child was a little cranky. So that's when they went to uh, uh, their pediatrician, a good friend of mine and uh, from there, when they saw the child, there was a visible cyanosis. They checked the saturations, it was 85%, and then they referred us the, uh, the child kid to us. So, basically, Depson is known to cause methemoglobinemia, and you know, to clinch the diagnosis was not difficult here as history was very clear. But if the child come presents like this then you know with no distress or something one should always think about methemoglobinemia so hi let's discuss in uh, through this video a little bit about the management and how we approach this child so what is methemoglobinemia so basically hemoglobin has iron in ferrous state and for x normally also one to two percent of our hemoglobin is methemoglobin for some reason due to some chemicals medications or dyes even local anesthetics that the ferrous state becomes ferric and the affinity for oxygen increases so methemoglobin shifts the oxygen dissociation curve to the left and it does uh, tissue hypoxia and stuff like that in choose so basically this depson is well known one of the uh, agent which can cause this uh, depson chloroquine as i said local anesthetic drugs they would uh, cause methemoglobinemia Consequences, as we said, it would shift the oxygen the dissociation curve to left and that leads to tissue hypoxia and further consequences. Apart from that, some of the agents would cause hemolysis also and one of which is Dapson is known to cause hemolysis in G6PD deficient as well as non-deficient. So, so this was in brief about methemoglobinemia. So once here, when we saw the child, he was irritable, tachycardia, there was not much tachypnea saturations on room air were uh, sorry not with nrm of 100 percent was 85 to 86 percent and at the same time when blood gas was done uh, his po2 was 186 so as you see that if we follow the oxygen dissociation curve we expect po2 to be low when the saturations are so low but here in this condition uh, we would have a uh, normal PO2 but very low saturation. So here SPO2 is not a good clinical marker and you might need to keep a check on his PO2. Cyanosis was there, child was irritable, we hospitalized the child. Now let's discuss about the management of this particular condition. So ideally one can order coxmetry uh, test or blood gas, routine blood gas which we do will not tell us the percentage of methemoglobin. And a specialized blood gas, uh, we have to do coxmetry is what we call. Uh, at night, we could not get hold of that thing. But usually it is important that because clinically you can judge what all, uh, you know, plan you can make if the child is very severely uh, having a methemoglobinemia. So if the child is 30% or less of methemoglobin, usually it doesn't cause much of a problem. You can just observe the child and that child can go home early. When there is 30 to 50, 60 percent will have some symptoms like this kid had and if there is more than 70 percent then you might need to do the uh, whole blood exchange, uh, action transfusion you'll have to do. So if we discuss the management first and foremost airway breathing and is circulation ABC takes a priority so 100 percent supplemental oxygen has to be started and that's what we had started. Uh, apart from that, GI decontamination has a role if you do it early. This child presented to us 7-8 hours later, we could we didn't do it but yeah, you can give it a try and even activated charcoal also one may, if that agent ha uh, gets absorbed on the surface of charcoal, one might consider using it. Uh, 
uh, injection methylene blue is what uh, is indicated and that is what we had used for this child the dose is around 1 to 2 milligram per kg of methylene blue slowly it has to be given uh, you can repeat it as and when required every hourly keeping watch on the saturations and you can go up to 7 milligram per kg that is the max dose uh, if you need to do a repeated uh, injections of methylene blue keep a watch that it itself causes hemolysis and paradoxically methylene blue also can cause methemoglobinemia so one has to keep that in mind if you are repeatedly using many times what you feel that it's not responding but that it has responded and now because of the methylene blue you are uh, the hemoglobin is methemoglobin so that uh, keep that point in your mind for this particular child we gave methylene blue uh, one dose in night around when they presented to us 11 10 30 11 o'clock we gave that dose after that immediately his saturations improved from 85 86 to 94 95 and it persisted so for 48 hours is what we observed him and then we discharged suppose if it doesn't respond we might have to keep a repeat as i said before and if in spite of methylene blue if it's there is highly uh, high very high levels of methemoglobin then you might need exchange transfusion that you have to uh, consider so this was in brief about uh, methemoglobinemia diagnosis and management thank you so much